need at least three people to start. I'm with this is good. Alright? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا رب شحني صدري ويسر لي أمري وحد العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Khaliq The one who created everything the one who commanded be and it is. فَإِذَا قَضَى أَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ In this brief khutbah, we don't have enough time to talk about this important topic that needs to be addressed. Especially for us who, who don't have like the proper knowledge we need to know about wudu. Wudu is today's topic. I will explain the fiqh of wudu the benefits of wudu. When do you when do you need to make wudu? What breaks your wudu? Tayammum and wiping over the socks, and it will be much much more. An Abi Umama قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أيما رجل قام إلى وضوئه يريد الصلاة ثم غسل كفيه نزلت خطيئته من كفيه مع أول قطرة. And that means that uh, Prophet Muhammad said, whenever a man performs wudu intending to pray his uh, and he washes his hands, the sins that he did with his hands will fall down on the first drop. فَإِذَا مَضْمَضَ وَاسْتَنْشَقَ وَاسْتَنْثَرَ نَزَلَتْ خَطِيئَتُهُ مِنْ لِسَانِهِ وَشَفَتَيْهِ مَا أَوَّلِ قَطَرَهِ When he rinses his mouth and nose, the sins of his tongue and lips fall down with the first drop. فَإِذَا غَسَلَ وَجْهَهُ نَزَلَتْ خَطِيئَتُهُ مِنْ سَمْعِهِ وَبَصَرِهِ مَعْ أَوَّلِ قَطَرَهِ When he washes his face, the sins of his hearing and his sight fall down. فَإِذَا غَسَلَ يَدَيْهِ إِلَى الْمِرْفَقَيْنِ وَرِجْلَيْهِ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ سَلِمَ مِنْ كُلِّ ذَنْبٍ هُوَ لَهْ وَمِنْ كُلِّ خَطِيئَةٍ كَهَيْئَتِهِ يَوْمَ وَلَدَتْهُ أُمُّهُ فَإِذَا قَامَ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ رَفْعَ اللَّهُ بِهَا دَرَجَتُهُ وَإِنْ قَعَدَ قَعَدَ سَالِمًا When he washes his arms to his elbows and his feet to his ankles, he is purified from every sin and fault like the day he was born from his mother. From the day he was born his mother. Every minor sin that he did will be deleted. SubhanAllah. One of the things that wudu could forgive is, you know, minor sins. And one of those is bad words. We live in a country today where a lot of people, they mention bad words and they say bad words and they know it is haram. To say bad words is haram. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَيْسَ الْمُؤْمِنُ بِالطَّعَانِ وَلَا اللَّعَانِ وَلَا الْفَاحِشِ وَلَا الْبَذِي Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said the believer does not taunt others. He does not curse others. He does not use profanity. You heard that? He does not use profanity. And he does not abuse others. A Muslim is supposed to show they are the best people. So if they say bad words, that is showing that you know nobody will know you're a Muslim. Me, people will tell I'm a Muslim. Somebody today said, you have patience, Yazid. How, how do you have this patience? I told him an ayah in the Quran, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ Patience is a virtue. Patience is beautiful. 
And that's how we can recognize that this person is a Muslim. Please do not talk during the khutbah for that is disrespectful. And during the khutbah you're not supposed to talk in Islam. Jazakumullahu khayran. Of the sunnas of wudu is to have an intention, a niyyah, using the siwak, tasmiyah, starting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name of the ad. And this will bring me to the point where we talk about wudu. Wudu, we're going to be talking about the sunnah. So the first sunnah is obviously the niyyah, the siwak, tasmiyah, and doing the washing up of the hands, including the wrists. Of the adab, the etiquette, the manners of doing wudu, is facing the qibla, avoiding the, the water used in wudu from getting on your body, making dua, uh, mentioning the name of Allah and watching each, washing each limb, and performing wudu by yourself, uh, and drinking from the leftover water afterwards. I know we have sinks, so we cannot do that. Among the dislike things, the things that are makruhat, is using too much water, israf. Using too little water when washing, and slapping or striking your face while making wudu. That is of the makruhat, when making wudu. Wudu is a very important topic and we must know how to do it in order to do our salat. There are things that will break your wudu. There are uh, Okay, for the things that you have to do to have wudu is minor impurity. If you make wudu, you have to make wudu to do these things. The salah. In order to have to do your salah, you must have wudu, right? And also when you are reading Quran or reciting Quran, and then there comes a sajda ayah. An ayah where you have to do a sajda. You must have wudu for that. There is a sajda where you don't have to do wudu for, but that's another topic. And you also don't have to face the qibla for that. Touching a verse of the Qur'an, or just touching the mushaf itself, you must have wudu. Now, if you want to like get it out of the way, say it's like here in front of you, you gotta move it out of the way, what are you gonna do? And you don't have wudu, you can have a barrier. Have a barrier between, like put on a glove, pick up a napkin, and you can move your mushaf to the side. But you cannot touch it if you don't have wudu. Recommended things for having wudu when somebody uh, recommended things are before to have wudu is before touching a book of fiqh to renew your wudu for another prayer to avoid disagreement of scholars before sleeping after sleeping. After every sin and after laughing out loud outside of the salah. That's recommended. That's not like fard, it's just recommended. Wudu is broken by the following things. Number one, anything that exits the two openings, your wudu is nullified. It is cancelled. You, you can't do you can't do salah anymore. Anything, any filth that flows from your body. For example, blood. If you have blood that's flowing. So let's say you have a nosebleed. When you have a nosebleed, your blood is flowing out. Correct? Right. That cancels your wudu. Now let's say that you have a little scratch on your hand and you see blood, but it's not flowing. Your wudu is still valid. But if it's flowing, then it's canceled. Or pus. Pus is the little yucky uh, yellow thing that uh, uh, comes out of your skin that, that also nullifies wudu. Vomiting a mouthful. So if you throw up, that also breaks the wudu. Okay. Sleeping in a position 
to where your behind is not touching the floor. Like right now, all of y'all, this is a, if you slept in this position right now, your wudu will not be breaking. But if you're like laying down and sleeping, like on your bed, that breaks your wudu. That's the reason why you make wudu when you're sleeping. Because you don't know what happened. You don't know what you did when you were sleeping. Loss of consciousness. So if you lose what you, if you lose uh, your consciousness, you have to make wudu again. Insanity. If you're a crazy person, you have to remake wudu. If you're drunk, yeah, I know. If you're drunk, you have to make wudu. I know in Islam you're not supposed to be drinking, you know. But some people, you know, there's a story, a funny story about that. People, they were a father and a son. They were drinking alcohol. And I believe the father, he told the son, son, make sure you say bismillah before you drink the alcohol. Uh, and then after that, they went to go pray. Like, you know, astaghfirullah, may Allah guide us all and forgive us all. Laughing out loud in salat. That breaks your wudu. In the Hanafi madhab. In the Hanafi madhab, which is, the, which is what we're studying, but we should also go to this one because it's the oldest. The oldest one, and the majority of the people, I believe, actually follow this method. Alright. And inshallah, we'll be moving on to the next topic, which is tayammum. Tayammum happens when you don't have any water. If you don't have any water, how are you going to salli? You know, how are you going to do your salat? If it is extremely cold and you cannot use water because you have a possibility, some possibility of getting sick, then you can make tayammum. Tayammum is using anything made of earth, sand, dirt, grass, and you can make grass, and uh, probably these walls, if they're made of earth material, you could actually make wudu with them. Sickness. Uh, some people they have a, a sickness to where if they uh, uh, touch water, you know, it could it could do something to them, you know. So that's also another reason why you would could make uh, tayammum. Wounds on most of your body is also another reason. So if you have wounds and you don't want to get hurt, you could also make tayammum. Fear of thirst. Let's say that you go on a hike, go hiking, and you don't have water enough. You don't have enough water. What are you gonna do? You are going and uh, you have like, let's say two bottles of water and there are two people, you, you're in the middle of hiking, there's no, no water nearby, you know, that's a bad choice to make. But if you don't have, and if you're fearing of thirst, that you're gonna be thirsty later on, don't use the water. Use the yamam, use, use the earth, earth resources that you have. Lack of an enemy, I mean fear of an enemy around water. Fear of missing the Janazah prayer or the Eid prayer, you can't make Tayammum. Now, uh, I'd like to get to this part, but there's not enough time. So, أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي الحمد لله الواحد الأحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد. I really wish that we could have a, like more people for the khutbah. We're supposed to have an extra person, but uh, unfortunately because of what happened, ruined it for us. May Allah سبحانه وتعالى forgive us all. اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعبكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر وهو عليم بما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة